Monster Kill, I think, Al. Feeling right, we'll see. Not a giant one, but pretty nice fish, huh? We'll take that here, starting to get a little, little bit bigger. Sun's warming up, you know, this is uh, just, it's, it's springtime, it's the first of June today. So it's kind of that early summer, late, whoa, late spring type of a deal, and it's just a great time to be out on the water, multi-species fishing. And really, right now, Al and I are targeting sunfish. We're looking for some big bluegills. Any chance you've got to get on a pre-spawn bite, whether it's bluegills, crappies, muskies, you name it, the fish are very, very aggressive. So we're fishing with aggressive presentations, little micro jerk baits, the X-Trap 4, and we're just gonna catch a pile of fish today. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. I got a nice crappie here. Not huge, but nice. You got your next year class up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Better? Yeah, that's what we're. Well, those are not bad. That's what we're talking about. Take those all day. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Nicer than I thought. This bait has just been amazing. I mean, ever since I found this thing for smallmouth bass, I remember watching Al do a show on smallmouth bass years ago with the X Trap, and it was like the most amazing lure ever. And since that point in time, it has become my absolute favorite bait ever for catching everything. Big crappies. Right now, we're targeting bluegills. You'll notice I've got a little waxworm on there, trying to coax a few of the bigger bluegills into into biting it right now, but man, what an amazing bait to throw around in the spring. What do you got there? It's Still a nice a nicer, yeah, nicer fish. But those hooks on this x wrap even though I got, I got the barbs, the barbs are flattened out on this thing. So you can, you know, when you get the bluegills, they're grabbing it and they got the, the tail hook in their mouth and it's so much easier. Yeah, you know, we snip the barbs off so you can handle the fish so much quicker. And the needles are, the needles, it's like needle shot. Is that a better one? Mm, looks like I a better one. I don't know that it is. They're just the bluegills feel so nice. I was just talking about how much I love the X-Wrap. Man, oh man, if we had, wow, look at that one, that's a beauty. Amazing success with hard baits for panfish recently. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when I was growing up, you wouldn't even really think about doing anything for panfish unless it involved a hook and a leech or a nightcrawler or a waxworm, maybe a jig. Plastics were the extreme, but I'm telling you what, we've just had such incredible success with hard baits in recent years for big bluegills, big crappies. They're always in the boat. And we're in a situation right now where we set out to catch fish on little micro X wraps, and we are catching them every single cast, but seeing a lot of bigger fish in here. And that's why we're fishing the minnow baits, hoping to select for the bigger fish. I put this little top water on. This little popper right here, and it's just been bam, 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 every cast. So, so I'll get this guy back and hopefully catch one that's quite a bit bigger. And I can tell you one thing, if I catch a couple more on top water, pretty sure Al's gonna put that <laughs> X-Wrap down and say, I want in on top. Nice, nice crappie, crappie, Al. Nice crappie. Nice crappie. Not a bad crappie. Feels like that one you had before. Nice healthy ones. At this time of year, it's so much fun. You know, you come back here, Somebody asked you, well, how'd you guys do today? Oh, we caught a couple hundred. Yeah, you know, we are out about four hours. <laughs> it's bluegills, it's crappies, it's bass, it's perch. You can't bait a hook if you're using bait. You can't catch more fish faster than what we're doing with artificials, whether the crappies or the bluegills. It's impossible. And it's just a matter of cycling through and you get the bigger, bigger, bigger fish. A little bit more like you're popping on them gills, you get a, a bigger one doing that. But once you start doing this, you're like the kid in the candy factory. It takes you back to the days when you were sitting on the dock and you were about five years old and you were watching those blue gills all over the place and you started to catch a couple of them and you got lit up. Like uh, uh, it turned you on to the sport of fishing. You know what I'm talking about. You're one of those people sitting on the dock looking at the bluegills. It turns you on to fishing. It's so great. And this is the same thing. You know why? Because you're getting bit constantly. And it's so much easier when you don't have to bait up all the time. When that bite is on, 
and it's on more times on an artificial than most people realize for the gills or the crappies, actually. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. You know, we're sitting in about three feet of water in the back end of the shallow chute, and then we're throwing up, in some cases, to about a foot and a half. You could fish this bait in extremely shallow water. Yeah, yeah, you know, with very short pops. A lot of times, I'll, when I'm getting shallow like this, I'll hold my rod up like this, and I'm twitching the rod just like this. That bait is just, you know, just twitching in place. You know, it's really shallow. It's probably a little, not much more than a foot under the surface. Yeah, you know, and I'm hardly moving it, and they're coming in, and they're looking, you know, I look at that tail, and they go, boom. And on sunny days, those bluegills and crappies, sometimes they'll get, they'll get in water this skinny, and you can still fish a bait like that. The other advantage with this X-Wrap, too, is opposed to the traditional spring fishing technique of, a, you know, a jig and a, and a bobber, it's almost like presenting a little fly in the water so you can have really silent entry when it hits it's not scaring the fish away and it also just gets i mean it, it you get those reaction bites out of the fish too a lot of times it's like it hits the water and bam they're on it so it's a really really deadly technique the more efficient the more i'm absolutely sold that this is like the number one springtime panfish bait of all time crop yeah pretty decent one too oh, yeah. i'm always amazed at the attitude these crappies have you'll see it when i lift this guy in the boat look at that Head first. How many times are people out here thinking about crappies, thinking that they're just gonna come up, kind of nose the bait, maybe just grab the tail of the minnow? Crappies can be super aggressive. I mean, it's amazing the baits that these things will hit. And they are absolutely not afraid to smash baits like this. And this is the size four, but believe it or not, if I'm fishing decent crappies, I'm fishing the size bigger than this, the size six a lot, because crappies will hit relatively large baits. How many times have you been out walleye fishing and caught one of the biggest crappies of the year bass fishing throwing a ned rig or something like that and caught a huge crappie so don't be afraid to throw bigger baits for crappies they definitely love hitting stuff like this you know one of the biggest mistakes i think bluegill and crappie fishermen consistently make is not fishing small enough and light enough on this particular rod I've got suffix monofilament on here the reason that i wanted that, that for this kind of fish i knew we'd be fishing real shallow and I wanted to make sure my bait stayed a little bit higher, and the mono helped me do that. That was my thinking behind it. Jerry, I, I know, is fishing nano braid with, uh, uh, I'm a, a pretty sure, a fluorocarbon leader. We're using four pound test line, and it just, it, it's the key to catching more fish. I'm using the new uh, Avid Series rods from St. Croix. This particular rod that I'm throwing right here it's a six foot, nine inch, medium light power, extra fast action. And recently, St. Croix has done a phenomenal job of bringing panfish rods to the industry that are made strictly for panfish. Panfishing has come a long way. And the rod reels and lines have been a part of it where you can go out and catch fish after fish after fish like this. The equipment, like it is for any kind of fish, is one of the keys to making it a lot of fun and very successful. Ooh, greeny. Nice, pretty one. Yep. If you've seen pumpkin seed sunfish, you know how pretty they can be. These things can be even prettier than pumpkin seeds another week or so, and they'll start getting ready to spawn, and this will be one of the prettiest fish you'll ever see swimming in fresh water. They can be nice and aggressive, too. I like catching those. Ooh, that's a nice crappie, isn't it? Yeah, no, not really. not really. Just a real aggressive one. No, it's it's not a bad one, but it's not a... Not a mango. It's not like them other ones. So, it's still so much fun to catch fish after fish after fish. You know, when we came in today, the lake we're on is not, you know, a real big lake. And uh, the total, I look at the cars at the access, and there, there's about eight boats at the access here today. Two of them were bass boats and arrest our pan fishermen. It's that time of year. You've got two guys fishing bass. I'm assuming they're in a bass boat. Maybe they're fishing gills and crappies. I don't know. Jerry, that's a big that's one. That's a nice one, yep. Uh, Not a huge one, uh, but nice. Well, well, give me a second here while he gets that fish in. 
I don't know what Al was going to say, but one thing that I will say is one of the comments we ran into some folks out here and they said, ah, we haven't run into anything. We're not catching anything. And you know what? They're probably just going to a spot where they fished before, they're soaking bobbers, and really, you gotta spend some time hunting these fish. Al and I started, we put the trolling motor down. We really weren't using our electronics all that much, more so the map to find the shallow little bay here. And then from there, we just got the trolling motor down. We started looking, looking with our eyes. Pretty soon, oh, there's a pike. Oh, there's a bass. And then you see a school of bluegills. And that's when you really start to slow down. You fish a lot slower. And if you, we were out here just pulling up to this point where we caught them in the past, soaking a minnow, we wouldn't have caught anything. You gotta be aggressive in finding the fish. And then when you get them, you don't need to sit around and monkey around with bait. Those guys didn't catch a single fish and we're catching them every cast. And we don't have minnows in the boat. Just artificial ones. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to talk about those guys. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. A little better? Pretty decent, I it think. It looks yeah. like a little, little better a one. one. Yeah. That's better. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. There are some really big ones in this lake, but the way bluegill fisheries have been going in recent years, that's still a pretty nice bluegill just about any, anywhere you go. It's pretty cool what we're doing here in the state of Minnesota with some of our panfish, panfish lakes, special regulation lakes. We've got a lot of lakes now that are, uh, this guy go, a lot of lakes now that are a five fish limit, a 10 fish limit. And so we're selecting a number of lakes that have had a history of producing big sunfish in particular, but also crappies because you think about a sunfish, you might think, oh boy, those things just grow real quick. There's, there's nothing to sunfish, but big bluegills can be very old and they are very, very rare. So it's hard to find those really special bluegill lakes, but it's encouraging to know that the future is looking bright in Minnesota with the uh, quality bluegill initiative that we've got going on here. So that's a pretty, pretty cool thing. You know, when you get these fish in this real shallow water like this, this time of the year, in my observation, these protected little corners where the sun is cooking, cooking in, draws a lot of fish. Well, one thing, you know, that, that's awesome about this time of year too that I'll say is, you know, this with the boat that we're in right now, I mean, it's absolutely loaded with the most amazing technology. We've got side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar, 360, we've got live imaging, and this is one of those times of year where you don't even need a boat to take advantage of a hot bite like this. Springtime is when the fish are shallow. If Al and I were stuck fishing on the shore over by that rock here, we would be having the same results as we are sitting in a boat with $20,000 worth of fancy equipment. So it's, it's just a great time of year for anybody, regardless of the equipment you have, to get out and take advantage of some of the funnest fishing of the year. It's just fabulous. You catch everything doing this. Everything all over the place. That little guy. But in terms of, uh, you know, talking about all the different technology we have but aren't currently using today, one of the most critical pieces of technology you really, really, really have to have, and it's important every time you're fishing, but is, is good eyewear for this type of thing. Polarized glasses make all the difference in the world. It's just amazing. I take people fishing off the, you know, at the dock, at the cabin, you're like, oh, there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish, and they don't have polarized glasses, and they don't even know what you're, what you're talking about. And so these fish, just in this little back corner here, the pot is over here, the pot is here, the pot is over here. Al and I can just stay on them. It's not because we're using magic sonar technology to see them. We're just using our eyes and good polarized glasses. Just one of those that likes to dive around a lot. We wear the Wavy Label brand sunglasses. They're from our hometown in Brainerd. They've got a lifetime warranty. They just make an awesome product. You can get them in glass, you can get them in plastic, but really an awesome deal. And I like the amber lens. I just think it's the most versatile lens for doing stuff. And if you don't have these, you're not gonna be in the game. You got a nibble, Al? A gill. A little bit better one. A little bit better one. Oh yeah, that's a nice yeah, one. Yeah, this one's starting to get up there. Yeah, and that's a nice one. Not a King Kong, but it definitely is a nice one. Anytime I can catch gills like that on artificials, I'm excited. 
It ain't a real big one, but I'll take them all day. <laughs> nice. It's funny how you get crappies and bluegills of the same size, and the bluegills always just fight so much harder. Al talked about the rods that we're using. I'll tell you a little bit about the, the reel that I've got that I've got on here. And, and the biggest thing is not necessarily the reel itself, though there's some great features of this reel. It's, it's the size. So a lot of pan fishermen are fishing 500, 750 size reels. And that can, that's fine for ice fishing, but I really am fond of fishing the 1,000 size reels. And even in some cases, the 2,000 size. The frame of a 1,000 and a 2,000 are the same. It's just that the arbor size is a little bit bigger. And now when we're fishing X-wraps like this, this is a slack line presentation. So you wanna be able to pick up line very quickly. So the bigger spool helps you pick up line more quickly. It also is better for line management so you can get further casting distance than you would with a smaller arbor, smaller size reel. The one I've got on here, this is Daiwa's Fuego. Absolutely a dynamite reel. This is in that $100 price point, about as sweet as you can get. And one of the features that this reel has that makes it last for such a long time is something called mag seal. The mag seal prevents any intrusion from water, from dust, and it makes the reel smooth for a long, long time without creating the friction that you get from a traditional seal. So for a $100 reel to have a feature like that in there is, is unbelievable. Then every time we talk about Daiwa reels, it's the same thing. Listen to the drag. The big thing with, with fishing panfish stuff is get a reel with a good drag. You're fishing light line. You always run into a big pike, a big bass. You might get the bluegill of a lifetime. So don't chintz on something where you're gonna hear the drag on zit, 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 dial reels. It's always as smooth as it gets. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You wanna be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, fights. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. Now, one thing I've seen with bluegills over the years of fishing them is they are a fish that there are times when bait can make a huge, huge difference. Bluegills, sometimes like this, will go through, we'll throw this little X wrap around, we'll catch a bunch of fish, and you see that there are fish there that are tentative. But I found that just getting a little tub of wax worms, and I'll just take right where that feather is, and I'll just thread a wax worm around the hook those three times. That kind of makes it my little trailer. And a lot of times you can start catching fish after fish after fish after fish again. There we go, that's more like it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Wow, wow, wow. Lift them in. Oh yeah, this is what we're talking about. Absolutely a magnum. Magnum, magnum sunfish. And I just want to show you, I was talking about that little tip. I had been casting this area. I'd made six or eight casts and not gotten bit. Put that waxworm on there, came in and just grabbed that. That's absolutely a beautiful sunfish, truly a trophy anywhere you swim, and you absolutely have to let fish like this go. These are just such a rare resource anymore. So special to catch. That was the goal for the day, right there, get one like that. I gotta tell you, when Jer put me on this bike with that, for, for, for bluegills and, and crappies some years ago, I got hooked on it. Then when you stop and think, everybody that we've had out here, here you, they experience this, what we're doing for panfish, and they light it up. Jer, Jer, Jer's an avid, hardcore musky fisherman. That's where he's gonna be in a couple of days. Yet he's out here like a kid in a candy factory. And I am, I'm an avid smallmouth fisherman. That's, I'm, I'm, that's my fish of choice, smallmouth and walleye. Yet coming out here on days like this, catching a bunch of bluegills and crappies, it makes you young again, baby. It makes you young again. Another one he's got. Have you ever said something that as soon as you finish saying it, you thought, oh my gosh, I wish I never said this. But you don't get a do-over. It's said, it's done. We all been there. We all know what I'm talking about. You wish you could take some of these things back. Some of them have a major impact on people's lives, not only yours. And I'll give you an example of something that really, so it sounded simple, but it left a mark on me. 
and it happened just a short while ago, spring of the year. I'm crappie fishing on a lake not too far from, my, uh, from our office. There's two boats of us out there, and, and we're catching a reasonable amount of fish. We're coming to, to get back off to go to another spot, pull the boat out of the water. And there's two guys anchored in, in, in a, a, a boat fishing a particular area. And I'm following the boat in front of me to get off the water. And where these guys were fishing, I know this sounds dumb. It was tight, tight between shore. And we came kind of closer than we should have between them and the spot that they were fishing. And as, as we came through, these guys in the boat has some choice words for us. And one of them, the last thing he says is, I pass through. He says, Al, you should know better. I went through. I can't forget those words. Al, you should know better. I should have stopped and went back and apologized. I didn't. Hey, I hope you're watching that television show right now. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Your words meant a lot to me. It, res it went in, it burned into my heart. As somebody that professes to be a Bible-believing Christian, I should know better. My action should make a difference. And I can't tell you how often that was a check in my mind and in my spirit. I should know better. And I just have to share that with you. Because again, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What you said, those words, I should know better, have changed my life for the better. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.